Hello, hello to all of my Aries. This is Queen Amun Ra coming to you with your full moon in Aquarius reading. The full moon kicks off on the 11th and it goes until the 17th of this month. So we're going to get you prepared for that and also uh, see what the cards have to say for you. This is a general reading, Aries, so take only what resonates with you. If you're interested in a personal reading, my information is down below in the description. Let's get into your reading. Oh, a card jumped out. All right, this emperor card jumped out all right we're going to leave this right here we're going to leave this emperor card right here the energy has already been cleared aries so let's go let's see what your cards have to say let's see what your cards have to say let's see what your cards have to say aries let's see let's see what we have to say here okay eight of swords the knight of swords uh-huh the two of swords the nine of cups and also the page of wands all right let me make a little bit of room here so we can get into your reading. Like I said, the Emperor card. The Emperor card, when you whenever you see the Emperor card, I'm seeing that there's a you already a divine masculine sign, right? And we're we're in uh for some of you all we are already at the eleventh of the month. So for some of you all it could be the tenth of the month. So if it's the tenth of the month you still have a couple of more hours for purging couple more hours of purging that that first quarter moon in Scorpio which is really going to go dig really really deep into those wounded areas in those areas that are unhealthy emotions right emotions feelings subconscious habits your all of those things having to do with your feelings and your emotions there but I do see there's a part of you that says, I need to get back on my throne. I need to stop sabotaging myself. This is the Eight of Swords, the Knight of Swords, and the Two of Swords. I need to take the blindfolds off. Here's what you see in common with these two cards right here. The Two of Swords and the Eight of Swords. What do you see? Blindfolds, right? Somebody didn't want to deal with some repressed emotions, and they kept sabotaging themselves. So you decided, hey, I'm going to be my own knight in shining armor. Here's the Knight of Swords. I'm going to come charging through those emotions. I'm going to be my own knight in shining armor. So I'm not waiting for somebody else to save me. I can do it myself. I'm getting as far away from brash and sensitive energies, hypercritical people, people who don't care about my feelings. I'm getting as far away from that as humanly possible. So kudos to you. Kudos, kudos, kudos. The goal here, when we go from one phase to the next, is to land on the bright side of the moon. So for you as a fire sign, Aries, landing on the bright side of the moon means you're more idealistic, more creative, more tolerant, meaning that you're a humanitarian with progressive, a progressive outlook, right? We also have the nine of cups. This is about you just making time for yourself. So other people, it may look like you're being selfish, but actually you're not. This is self-care, wish fulfillment. I need to get back on my throne I don't care what people say. I've been blinded to, you know, I've been sabotaging myself for too long. I need to get back on my throne. Here we have the page of wands. So somebody has this, um, I don't want to say like teenager-like energy that you have within you, but you're deciding, hey, listen, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna land on one side or the other of the moon, I'm gonna make sure it's on the bright side of the moon. So if you're not ready to come, whoever whoever's not ready to come or whatever is not ready to come to that bright side of the moon with you, I'm gonna have to leave it behind. Because this moon in Aquarius for you in particular, um lends imagination and the common touch of your dynamic exuberant forcefulness like so especially if you're in the public eye it kind of gives you this extra fire to you right in a very unique way Aquarius is ruled by two planets is ruled by Uranus and also uh Saturn Saturn is that planet of completing something like you know what I need to get back on that throne if if I'm not going to complete anything else I'm going to sit on my throne I've earned that space on the throne so let me take these blindfolds off. And you know your ancestors are all around you trying to help you through this whole process. And somebody is feeling quite excited. You have this, this youthful energy. Page energy is very youthful energy. So that's how somebody's feeling. They're feeling quite youthful, right? So this is nice. Very, very nice. Also, on the 11th of the month... Um, well, I'm sorry, the, the number 11 is the number for light, right? Stepping into your own light. Whenever you see the number 11 in any form, whether you see it in 2 plus 9, like if you see a 2 and a 9, 11. If you see the left and the right of something, number 11, right? Your wall plate, the number 11. So there's a number 11 all around us. 
all around us is the number 11. So you want to make sure that you're taking advantage of every opportunity when you see 11 to step into your own light. Right? To step into your own light. To make some things happen for yourself. Right? To say, okay, I'm getting off the fence. I need to make a decision about some things. So the 11th of this month kicks off full moon. And actually, I was going to put it up on the 12th, right? So we talked about the 12th. It's still in that full moon phase, but it actually starts on the 11th of the month. It kicks off 100% fully illuminated. So 11 is that, that master number. It, it represents light, right? It represents getting off the fence, making a decision about something. I'm going to land on the bright side of the moon. And so no and ifs or buts about it. I'm taking these blindfolds off. I'm charging through those emotions. I'm getting as far away from people who are insensitive to my feelings. I need to get as far away from them as possible. So yeah, of course, when you decide to move on from something, there are going to be some people who think you're selfish, but no, it's self-care. Four of swords, nine of wands, six of wands, nine of pentacles, nine of swords, and the five of wands. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Who is trying to start little petty arguments with you? Like somebody's trying to drag you backwards. After the nine of wands, you've come through this long and arduous journey, right? And something is still trying to pull you back. So it could be emotionally that they're trying to pull you back. You may not have received a phone call or something like that. Just remembering how they would start little simple petty arguments with you over nothing. Just creating stuff. Starting off as being warm spirited and hi, how are you? That kind of thing. And then baiting you into some kind of an argument. So it could be fresh for some of you all. Like I said, if it's the 10th where you are and you feel like that's the last thing I need to purge, have a burning bowl ceremony. I certainly had one earlier, right? So I had my burning bowl outside, making sure that the wind caught the, you know, the flames and just made sure it burned a lot of things to the, to a crisp. So everybody has something in their spirit that they need to allow to come to the surface, some kind of past wound, something that you may not have thought about for 20, 30 years. All of a sudden, you know, this Scorpio moon brought some things to the surface. That's not the time for you to question if it's something that you need to release. You just need to be grateful to source. Thank you for reminding me that that is something that I need to release, right? So here we have the four of swords and also getting your rest. This is going to be this is going to be extremely important. Developing some kind of a, a routine where you start to settle down at a certain time of whatever. Some people work graveyard shifts. Some people work whatever your hours are. Setting aside a certain amount of time to shut down everything. Go into rest mode and then allow your body to drift off to sleep, right? So when you wake up, you feel refreshed. Like, okay, I, I know I had a full night's of sleep. I may be a little bit uh, tire, just kind of, you know, coming up out of that rest state. But once I'm up, I'm up, right? I'm ready to get productive, start my day. Here we have the six of wands. This is somebody kind of still being back in the spotlight again, getting up on your high horse. And this is not you looking down on anybody, but again, exhibiting very much king queen behavior, if emperor behavior, empress behavior, right? I'm getting back on my, my high horse, right? I'm, I'm, I'm tired of being down there at that level crying, frustrated, sleepless nights, you know, trying to figure out what's what, right? Hurt, all of those other low vibrating emotions. So no, I decluttered that and I, just, I released it after I purged it and moved on. Here we have the nine of swords and also we have the nine of pentacles, right? So you've traded in all those tears for financial independence. I love it, love it, love it. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Somebody had put so much masculine energy into their relationships, whether it was a job, a romantic relationship, friendship, or whatever kind of relationship that you were neglecting the feminine side of yourselves. So that's certainly not something that you want to do again, right? You don't certainly don't want to do that again. So make sure you're careful with balance, balancing out your feminine energy. What that looks like is taking time for you. That's why somebody feels like you're selfish because you put so much energy and time into so many other people, Aries, that the first time you said, I need some time for me, you didn't even have to say that out of your mouth, Aries. The fact that you took time for yourself, people looked at you as like, okay, well, what do they need time for themselves for? That's selfish. You know, so again, moving forward, taking the blindfolds off and getting as far away from insensitive people, people that are insensitive to the fact that you've given and given and given, almost given your, 
you know, giving the last dime or giving your last, you know, whatever. So let's keep it moving forward. So remember, you're landing on the bright side of the moon. So um, you getting away from those energies and they decide to leave your life or you have to sever ties with them. Hey, you're running right into some other energies that are going to be more sensitive. Where's the, where's the, I just saw eight of swords. Yep. It came out twice. Self-sabotage. That's what was happening. Somebody was really sabotaging themselves. They were staying in a relationship that was just way, you know, like feeling trapped by a situation. Your feelings were floundering, you know, kind of refusing to listen to other people. You were like, I'm just going to stay stubborn. For whatever reason, somebody stayed in a position, in a situation they really didn't have to stay. And then, I mean, some of you all may have even gotten upset that somebody would even suggest, hey, you know, you're sabotaging yourself, right? You know, you could have left that situation a long time ago. But I'm not that kind of person. You don't just give up on people so easily. Not to say that that's what you all are saying, but that's maybe how somebody was feeling. Because again, who would stay in a situation where you're just having all of these sleepless nights dealing with insensitive behavior? Who would do that to themselves, right? There's, there's so much masculine energy in these cards. I'm like, okay, you only have two cards. It's feminine energy here. The nine of cups and the nine of pentacles, right? So that's that was that nine energy was the death rebirth, right? That was that, okay, I need to, I need to balance this out. I need to take some time for me. I need to focus on my enterprise, financial independence, and stop giving so much. I am limitless. Your number is the number zero, Aries. There is no beginning and no end. All is infinite. It is time to develop your spiritual side. You are gaining new insight and understanding of both godly and earthly things. That's right. You certainly are. You certainly are. Some of the things that you want to start focusing on too to kind of sort of strengthen those areas, I'm going to give you a list of gemstones and crystals that you can use. And if you may already have these, right? But we're going to talk about the, the nine, I mean, the um, um, sacral chakra and also the root chakra to help you balance this out. So for your root chakra, garnet is good. It promotes manifestation, revitalizes, it releases guilt and inhibitions. It purifies the blood and regenerates the DNA. Ruby is also good. It stimulates passion, determination, and prosperity. Hematite is good. It grounds, it strengthens, it revitalizes, it enhances memory. Red jasper is good. It promotes earth connection and stability. Black tourmaline is good. It enhances goal manifestation. It dispels stress and fear. And so those are for your root chakra. And so here we have, and those are, those are things that, again, because you're not going to forget to to sit your gemstones and crystals out to supercharge them, right? So just in case you have those, and then we're talking about the sacral chakra, orange carnelian is good. It increases passion, joy, creativity, motivation, and feminine energy. Moonstone is also good. It assists in looking inward, calms and stabilizes your emotions. Uh, coral is good. Fire opal is good. Orange calcite is good. Amber is good, right? So again, this is increasing your feminine energy, right? Feminine energy. Remember you are limitless, right? So let's put this here for just a second and let's put some Oracle cards. And then I have one last question for source before we close out your reading, uh, so that you can know exactly the direction that you're headed in. Again, you've given out so much of yourselves and you're giving out advice, giving out money, giving out food, giving out warmth and just all this energy being directed outward, even in the midst of a lot of pain and feeling sabotage. That's just something that you have to really watch though, Aries, because again, you all could be, um, you know, your energy, your, your words can be kind of sure. You could actually, let me just say this. You could come off the same way to other people that you're being treated and not even realize it because you're giving so much hoping that in somebody who was breadcrumbing you, giving you just a little bit, but look to the stars, look to the stars. You see those moon phases there. Yeah. Right. Yep, look to the stars. Get download the moon calendar. Just download the moon calendar. Let's see what else we have here. Let's see what else we have here. Let's see what else we have here. And make sure you get around some people who are looking at this right here, part of your ritual. You want to make sure you are around some people that don't see you as selfish when you take some time for you, right? 
You're very close to achieving your goal. Very, very close to achieving your goal. What's the last message that we have for Aries, Most High? What if, what's the last message that we have for Aries here? What is the last message for Aries that we have here? What is the last message that we have for Aries? What is a takeaway message that you have for Aries Source? What would be a takeaway message in helping them with their feminine energy aside from the gemstones and crystals, the list that I've given them? What, what last information do you want for them to have? Let's see. Yeah, when I see this much masculine energy in here, it's like somebody forgot that there's feminine energy within. And I'm talking to men and women, Aries, by the way. Ace of Cups. Yep. More feminine energy. More feminine energy. So when you see this, this is where, about learning how to express yourself. Like you want a deeper level of commitment. If you're pouring into people and you're not getting that level of commitment back from them, that's a problem. That's a major problem. Major, major, major problem. And somebody needs to see that as such, right? But that's your takeaway message is when you, when you are fully committed to a friendship, a job, or whatever, your expectation should be, I'm expecting some kudos. I'm expecting some recognition. I'm expecting some acknowledgement. You got to start saying it out of your mouth. You have to start saying it because otherwise people won't recognize it. They won't give you any kudos. They won't recognize it. So yeah, that's, that's some more feminine energy there, right? You want a deeper level of commitment. If I'm pouring all of this into your cup, I'm expecting you to pour it back. And I don't expect for you to have rocks and sand when you're pouring back into me, pouring emotions back into me toxic, you know, toxic energy. So that's what I have for you, Aries. Again, happy full moon in Aquarius. Make sure you land on the bright side of the moon if it is still the 10th where you are. Even if you have a dream tonight about something you need to purge, you don't even need to overthink. Journal about it. God, I had a dream about X, Y, and Z. I feel like this is something that I need to purge. I did, I forgot. I had forgotten all about that energy, but thank you for bringing it to the surface for me so I can go ahead and release it. All right, that's what I have for you. And I'll see you in a couple of days. And remember, that full moon energy lasts from the, 11th to, from the 11th to the 17th. So if you don't get a chance to do a full moon ritual on the 11th, you can do it on the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, until we get into that last quarter moon. So again, don't fret. I will see you in a couple of days. Bye.